amongst the range of machines that could have made the Scottish journey smooth, predictable, even comfortable. I chose the Ural, but I always ask myself, why? What dark and twisted part of my soul lures me to this Frankenstein machine? Oh, not for its reliability. That'd be far too conventional, far too boring. No, it was chosen because it screams adventure in the most unpredictable ways. But in its unpredictability, in its quirks and flaws, lies its charm. Because just as with every twist and turn of Scotland's rugged coast, with the Ural, you're never quite sure what you're going to get. An adventure on the Ural promises not just a journey across landscapes, but a roller coaster of emotions, breakdowns, both mechanical and perhaps emotional, and stories that will be told and retold. For when you choose the Ural for such a journey, you're not just seeking a ride, you're embracing chaos. terrain and the beckoning beauty. It's the unexpected encounters that truly define this journey. Like that solitary highland cow standing middle of the road, challenging you to a staring contest, or the sudden downpour that has you rethinking your life choices. But fear not. For every cursed curve that has you questioning your sanity, there's a pub or inn around the bend with a roaring fire and a hearty meal to remind you that some choices, however mad, are absolutely worth it. I kicked off from Newcastle, where, between the modern beats of city life, I swear ancient voices whispered to me, it's all going to end in tears first pit stop, Jedburgh. Nothing like the sight of haunting abbey ruins to get the blood pumping, right? I half expected a ghostly monk to offer travel tips. This also marked the first tantrum of the Ural. A flat tire, but not in a conventional way. A small oil leak seemed to work its way like magic between the rim and the tire causing one to spin independently of the other when I stopped pulling in for fuel. The inner tube didn't seem to like this much. It was also at this point, I realized a jack would have been a handy thing to bring along. Peoples came next, a place as whimsical as its name, with the river tweed acting all nonchalant, as if it wasn't hiding some deep, murky secrets. It also had an awesome hardware shop that sold carjacks, thank God. Then, Glasgow. A city where the past and the present crash into each other, usually at a pub corner. The spirits here? Well, they're not just in the bottles. This also marked the glorious start of yet another oil leak, which was more of a steady flow 
than a standard Ural drip. I was always told that if a Ural doesn't have an oil leak, then it simply doesn't have oil. Loch Lomond beckoned, and while everyone goes on about its beauty, I was there looking out for those lesser-known water beasts. No luck, though. Here, I decided, was the perfect spot to pitch a tent and accept a little help from some friendly Glaswegian smackheads fixing my leaking differential with a tube of window sealant and some sticky back plastic. To my shock, it still holds to this very day. Fort William's misty embrace was next, with old Ben Nevis watching over me. This is somewhere I've always wanted to see, and truthfully, it seemed a little more rundown than I had imagined it to be. And Loch Ness, of course. Did I see Nessie? Well, let's just say some shadows are better left unexplained. Through Inverness, which is the official North Coast starting point, having to stop unexpectedly at a guilty guest house for yet another Ural tantrum. This accommodation was the perfect spot to give the Ural the attention it was crying out for. I spent hours with my spanners, oil a crucifix, and as much holy water as I could muster. The next day, I kindly waved goodbye to a comfortable bed and hot water and went past the enigmatic waters of Loch Marie and Antelaide. These places, postcard worthy during the day, goosebump inducing at night. Scurry camping site was the most beautiful sunset. But come morning, I could hear the screams and cries of grown men being eaten alive by the dreaded mist of Scottish midges. I don't ever recall taking down a tent so fast. Then, Smoo Cave, echoey, chilly, and begging for a ghost story or two. John O'Groats was awash with Scottish merchandise and people wanting a photo of the famous sign, proving to people on social media that they had made it. I myself, looking at the dark and twisted soul of the Ural, pinched myself in an attempt to wake from a slumber. A little grin came over my face as I realized I'm halfway. From the edge of the world at John O'Groats to the quiet streets of Wick, I was on a roll. Wick campsite was a perfect spot to sleep and then walk the river path into town for breakfast. Castle cropped up, looking every bit the part of a haunted mansion. If walls could talk, these would probably just sigh dramatically. And then, retracing some steps back to Inverness, Glasgow, Peebles, with every mile feeling like a chapter from an unwritten Gothic novel. In the Ural's heart lies bulletproof German BMW technology, adopted, worked, and refined by Russia. The Ukraine war has forced some of the production to Kazakhstan. This Ural has indeed been to all the places stuck upon its windscreen. But if you're wondering what sticker I purchased on eBay to put on the windshield next, it had to be this one. The man is a complete and utter pr I 
I found myself back in Newcastle upon Tyne, wrapping up a journey that was less tourist brochure and more tales from the crypt. And that's my version of a Scottish road trip. Beautiful, dark, a wee bit twisted, and definitely unforgettable. It has to be experienced to be appreciated. In the dim, often unpredictable theater of life, if you find yourself pondering whether to traverse the treacherous North Coast 500 or acquire the capricious charm of a Ural, why choose just one masochistic pleasure? Embrace both. After all, what's a little existential crisis on the road when you're riding the very emblem of unpredictability? I wholeheartedly recommend doubling down on the chaos. Godspeed, you brave, possibly unhinged soul. I'll end this broadcast with some additional footage, accompanied with some cheesy background music. And if you've made it this far, then I would seriously consider getting yourself some friends. On the other hand, let's just have some peace and quiet.